Hey friends, welcome to the Stationery Cafe, your podcast for everything stationery, journaling, planning related, and fun things happening in the community. I'm April from Penguins Creative, and today we're doing a very, very special episode with both Phyllis from At Missling Bloom and Kelly from Kelly Love Letters because it is our 100th episode of the Stationery Cafe podcast. Woo. So I just now realized it would have been super cute if like, if I held up a zero, Phyllis held up a zero, and April held up a one, like on a big It's too late, now. <laughs> too late now. That would have been a cute idea though. <laughs> we can just imagine, everyone can imagine that it happened. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna release the video version of this because we may be showing some stuff, but then at the same time, it's just... I can't believe we're at the 100th episode. I mean, we just had our anniversary, but with the inclusion of the happy hour, you know, we have, we've been doing two episodes per week. It's just so exciting that we've actually reached 100 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. And it's going to be a very fun, this is kind of like the happy hour episode too. So I'm definitely going to be asking um, Kelly and Phyllis, what are you guys drinking right now? So I have the pr natural progression of the morning coffee when you've had it for too long and then you have to make it into iced coffee. So that's what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and Phyllis? And I was drinking my, uh, it's not here with me right now, but I was drinking my homemade matcha latte, which is really mm. like watered down matcha powder with some sugar in it. <laughs> 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 but it's making me a little jittery, so I had to put it down. <laughs> <laughs> making it a little jittery. <laughs> yeah, my caffeine tolerance has really gone down. Interesting. Mm. I'm drinking um, on Kelly's recommendation that giant jug of royal milk tea from the Asian grocery store. And oh I'm, I, I poured it into this classy whiskey sort of yes. glass so, here with a single ice cube. So just <laughs> sipping on yes. that for a special occasion. <laughs> so, okay, here's like... Do, is anyone else as hype as I am? Because I literally texted April and I was like, yo, they've got the afternoon tea brand at Iwajimaya. Like, that's the best. In like the 1.5 liter quantity. <laughs> and Kelly sent me a Marco Polo, like a video, instant video of her just taking a swig from the whole bottle. <laughs> I feel like Kelly is very good at enabling with drinks because I listened to one happy hour episode and she was talking about a caramel macchiato and I literally bought three caramel macchiatos three days in a row after yes. that episode. Yes, they're so good, right? When it gets hot out. I don't know. There's something about it. I like never buy them. And then she said that I was like, yeah, I think I need a caramel macchiato. Starbucks, sponsor us. <laughs> Trader Joe sponsor us. You know, oh my god. Watch Maya sponsor us. Can you imagine? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll have to do like dessert and like candy like unboxing videos on YouTube oh or something. <laughs> I'd be I'm so down. But anyway, since it's the hundredth episode, I thought we'd do something interesting, you know, aside from the usual like what's in our planner, what do we want, we're going to have some very fun topics. But as always, let's start with a little planner update. And we're going to each talk about like just one book because, you know, we, we usually have a few systems going on at the same time. But mm -hmm. we're going to talk about one that we're particularly loving recently. And I think I'll start and then maybe mm -hmm. Phyllis and then Kelly. Sure. And so for me, it's uh, my lovely Thinking of You best decision ever this year to get the Thinking of You from Mr. Eggplants, which is a weekly layout in an A5 size notebook um, with Tomoe River Paper 68 GSM. But that doesn't really matter because I just plaster stickers all over it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> It's really my, it embodies my um, Taiwanese collaging style that's like so prevalent in the Asian journaling community. And I've been using it to do my, um, the stationary cafe list hashtag, um, the oh, one where yeah. we, we have prompts. And one of the prompts for March and April, because it's like a bi-monthly bi thing, was opening up a cafe on your page. And I like, I like found all of my, cafe related stickers print on memo sheet washi tape and just like it was really fun to kind of put together this spread because 
they they each are kind of different styles but like by layering or like by doing a little illustration mm-hmm. together they actually became quite cohesive which is really fun yeah. <laughs> the maruko stickers are or the tape are perfect in there exactly and oh my gosh have you guys seen her new releases for the creative expo which is probably oh coming God. out this week um which is happening in taiwan and there's all these cute cafe related stamps and items but Many of them, unfortunately, are event only. So, mm. so yeah, that's I'm, where you I'm, up your sister. I'm, I'm sending Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so yeah. amazing! I, by the way, my mom, my mom's been like back watching your your Twitch streams, April. So she's like, "Did you see April's thing?" And it was one that I didn't catch. I was like, "No, I haven't seen it." <laughs> And she was talking about your that page you just showed because she's like, I want that bear stamp with the little desk. <laughs> your mom's more up to date with my planner status than you are. I know. <laughs> and then just a bonus spread. This is my all things pink and sakura. So I used a bunch. It's like it's like for those who are not seeing it right now it's cherry blossom vomit <laughs> yes. on on the two spreads because i just have washi tape stickers big washi stickers from Rainbowholic, and then the origami paper from daiso it's just all over the place <laughs> milk berry tea the little pups yes milk berry on- yes mm-hmm. so cute so cute super cute cute. really loving it and it's really like helping me break out of my my you know the my style or like the constant way we journal in our own like original setup like my hobonichi has a certain way that I approach it but this one is just like when I'm like kind of bored or not knowing what to do I just like open it with the to a blank spread or blank week and then just like go wild on it so yeah. <laughs> i love it ah, so i love it phyllis what's your what's your setup okay so the one that i want to share today is my traveler's notebook passport because i haven't been using my passport size very much and then i don't know recently i was just in a mood to like redo everything and like putter around in all of my journals And I have a new setup for this, which I love. And so um, I'm taking it with me everywhere. I'm sketching more. So I have a like um, hours, uh, what do you call these? Like charms, I guess, on Mm -hmm. the outside. It's really cute. So the inside, I used a, one of those zipper, plastic zipper Mm -hmm. pockets, Mm -hmm. but then added kind of a that dashboard style so like a Ooh, little picture on the front that's a good idea and I just put in things that I like to look at you know I have a couple of travelers notebook pages and then one of their Madrid stickers mm-hmm. and then this is an uh I think it's an IEUAO mm-hmm. little embroidery patch <laughs> so, that you need on that. <laughs> so I have that and then just like in the pockets I just filled it up with some stickers ephemeral to use yes and then the insert so the first insert i have is just a plain like white insert and then i'm using it as like a sketchbook so i'm just cute phyllis i love that all the time like some of these are just sketches some of these are one line drawings so they look a little misshapen and stuff i love it i'm obsessed and then uh, playing with markers, playing with watercolor, like, and the size is so small. These sketches, we went to the park yesterday, and I was just walking behind some people, and I just sketched them while I was walking. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. <laughs> this is sketchbook gold, seriously. Yeah, it's like, and the, with this size of notebook, when you hold it, I don't, how would you call this? Like vertically, I guess. Yeah. When you hold it vertically, it's the perfect size for my like childlike hands. <laughs> you just hold it and then it's like so easy to sketch. You're doing the um, inspo right now, Phyllis. Me too. I'm going to go get, <laughs> grab one of my passports very yeah. soon. <laughs> and then another thing I did was I took the um, Mark Tarot Holmes. I've mentioned it before, but 
He's an urban sketcher. He has a bunch of guides online that are PDFs and you can print out for free. And I just resized a few of the ones that I thought were the most helpful and I printed them off and stapled them as a reference for myself nice. when I want to sketch. Nice. Yeah. Um, so then that's another pocket. So that's that insert. And then I have two more inserts. One, the, I have two more inserts because I got them on discount at Kino Korea. Yes. <laughs> <I> remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're the twenty. They're the twenty twenty monthly or twenty twenty one monthly and twenty twenty one weekly. So the monthly, I was doing like a um, a daily picture. Oh, it's so cute! And then, and then I decided I should just change it to do the Hobonichi challenge. So I went back yeah. and printed off all the different <sighs> sheets for the Hobonichi challenge. The prompts, nice. yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to just, whenever I feel bored and I want to doodle or draw, I'll just fill them out and then go through it. That's awesome. That's a super good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, the weekly is the one that I just, this one, if people have input on what to do, that would be great. Because <laughs> what I was doing was, because I already have a place where I keep a weekly log and I already have a planner with a to-do list. So I was using this as like, quote, like, fun to do's like right. go watercolor or something but I don't actually use it that much and so for mm. a couple of weeks now it's been empty mm. um mm. so if anybody else has ideas then that would be nice but I do think it's like a nice feature to have and yeah. then the final thing is I took the um the plastic one of those passport size plastic sleeves and attached mm -hmm. it to the um string mm -hmm. so that doesn't oh, fall nice. out and then that just has some extra papers and stuff inside. yeah nice what a great so, little setup to go setup that's yeah, seriously amazing to -go journaling setup i really <laughs> like it a lot oh my gosh i love it uh, it reminded me of my negleted um nolte <laughs> the oh. small one oh, let's not talk about the nolte i'm <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> I know. I, well, I sold my Nolte. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, Kelly, what's, your, what's yours? So I recently talked about this on Happy Hour. It's my um, my Spring Start 2021 A6 planner. I've never had an A6 Spring Start. I've only ever had a week's Spring Start. Um, back when I started, that was the first weeks I ever got um and so I oops sorry I'm moving um I have I got this sticker from uh Pips Donuts oh the it's donut a, place says, in Portland <laughs> yeah it says community not competition which is something that I often say at my job because you know sometimes customers will be like oh thanks for telling me to go to Blick or whatever I'm like well I don't see it as like they're taking my money. It's like we help each other out, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, and so I've got this in the month in the yearly overview. I have this adorable little bear <laughs> to do <sticky>. list. <laughs> yeah, well it's and it's kind of for a boring like tire rotation when I should get my tires rotated. So <laughs> you know it's practical keeping my, <laughs> keeping my adult shit fun sorry keeping my adult stuff fun <laughs> that's fine <laughs> and um and then I have kind of I, I guess I use the monthly for kind of like an overview uh, I feel like it's it's not fair of me to say that because there's literally a monthly overview in like every <laughs> <laughs> every single notebook you have. <laughs> So whatever, that's not important. But, but that's then, your favorite so thing, I, though. That's like Kelly works on the monthly view. That's like yeah, the thing about yeah, you. The view. <laughs> so I, um, I'm use. I got these little stickers from Kino Kunia in Portland that were undated, and they have these like little Japanese motifs. Um, oh, oh, it's like also monthly little calendar. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really like monthly calendars. Did you guys know? Um, so I've got just like a little kind of boring to do is like finishing my turbo tax um, and then working on organizing my stationery, which has seriously been very difficult for me. <laughs> That's literally on my list today. <laughs> yeah. well, I 
look like, over, I'm just like, oh my god, my stationery like, is overwhelming me. <laughs> it is. It's like, how do we go from it to be a big pile of crap to like, <laughs> I mean, it's good crap, but it's like just something that's easily accessible. So I'm still figuring that out. It's um, slowly taking that over. Process like, is so fun the puttering around and organizing is fun I think we kind of like like we make a mess and then we want to clean it up (laughs) it's true you're not you're not wrong so I've just I've actually been using the the daily pages every day um I really like call me by your name by the way (laughs) that song oh my gosh um and I just kind of it doesn't have to be fancy or anything and here's a little Yoseika um, oh, nice. So I kind of paste things in. I I write like, you know, having to talk to Social Security. If you if you have like a boring phone call, I put it in here. <laughs> uh, you know, like little things at work um, that I make notes of. And then this is for the podcast today. So I I've been consistently using it since April began, which we're on day eleven now. So I'm I'm proud of myself. I love it. <laughs> it's and awesome <laughs> I like it because I don't have to because you know with my thinking of you and my weeks and stuff those are all very intentional and this one is just kind of like whatever and I like having a whatever book <laughs> that's awesome yeah. you know it's interesting I feel like all three of us shared something that we like it's not our main book we all wanted to share something that is our whatever book like <laughs> I know, but that's right so it's like we i don't know it's like we feel like that's special like the ability to have break out of our structure and our usual journaling norm is very special to us for a hundredth episode whatever <laughs> let's just talk about our whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's I the whatever that. episode <laughs> that should be a thing yes. no but phyllis you are so right I to- i'm totally quoting you later <laughs> yes. yeah, nice. how do you annotate those quotations just make like a little <laughs> yeah. little thing and so i love that we all shared our whatever book and i hope this is inspiring people to like kind of treasure the notebooks that were left behind but yes. today we want to talk about like fun topics like this is a, a thing we're like what should we do to make this episode special let's talk about like dream scenarios because like we can't have it but be so fun to now in this episode plan the dream stationary retreat mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh well this all stems from us actually having a real retreat uh two years ago right phyllis was it two years ago or was it three i think years yeah it ago? was 2018 i think oh my gosh that's more than two years guys three years ago <laughs> wait, wait, wait no 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 sorry 2019 it was 2019 because it was the year yeah it, i was pregnant at the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was like was it around like early june or like i think it was march actually oh like but we had good weather for some reason early in the spring (laughs) and so phyllis me nita and then a few of our sketching friends we all got together and booked this little airbnb at vashon island for like two days and we just had the best time it was the, mm-hmm. it was a perfect escape from our family or like relationship responsibilities and we like brought loads of stationery with us to this little cabin with like the perfect seaside view and i think we even saw like eagles and like orcas wait yeah we saw an orca whale i know and we <laughs> got takeout and like we were just eating on like the <laughs> tables by the beach sorry kelly you didn't join us but i know i'm like i'm sad <laughs> <laughs> but like oh my gosh i feel like this year has this this year in the last has been like the year where everyone's broken out of their shell and i feel like the community's been more connected than ever and i felt <laughs> Like we already had made so much more friends who were willing to do this with us. So I'm just thinking like, what would be an awesome stationary retreat for the, for all of us to go on and to first, we, we want to do this in like an organized way, or we could just be throwing ideas <laughs> out, but location wise, like where would it be? Right. Yeah. I feel like 
when you're picking a dream retreat location, at least for me, there's always the struggle between do you want a city retreat or do you want a nature retreat? Because nature retreat like we did on Vashon has a lot of bonus or it feels like it's an escape and mm-hmm. you really get to unwind. And really, we didn't talk to anybody else. We didn't go anywhere. I think we That's amazing. At, I know. <laughs> we just like looked at a few places on the island. I think we, we journaled we had like journaling spots all day long, like near our cabin and, you know, other places. But then you do miss out, like if you had a city retreat, you get to see a lot of different cafes and maybe have landmark destinations where you can go sketching and And go shopping. Yeah, I know. (laughs) It might be more easily accessible for people also if it's in a larger area. So I think for me, the dream location is a place that has a balance of both. So Mm -hmm. like Vashon actually isn't, it wasn't quite, it's not that far from Seattle and it does still have like cafes and stuff. Otherwise a city like Vancouver, where you have beautiful Mm -hmm. nature, tons of shopping, like you can get both. You can escape into the nature and you can still stay in a really nice like fun place and uh you know go out and eat and stuff. The Asian and food and there. job friends and job are there yeah. <laughs> friends from pen dot traveler and joe from joe's journal and <laughs> they're tippy, both in yeah. Vancouver. Tippy butter and tippy from tippy and Feta butter. chronicles yes. yes so basically a lot of really cool people live in vancouver yeah. <laughs> or canada in general i don't know if they're all vancouver but yes well, i had like more of like a you know for the people who live in the U.S. I was like, a lot of us are on the West Coast. Um, what uh-huh. if we do like Portland, Kelly's home base? Hey. And we could go to Deadstock Coffee, which <laughs> I'm wearing a sweatshirt right now. Because <laughs> I think Portland is another place where it's like a good mix of like the Pacific Northwest weather. And like, there's definitely a lot of cafes to go to and mm. like stationary store wise you, you know the, the usuals oblation collage like kinokuniya tax free mm-hmm. initially i was like tokyo but then i feel like if we are in tokyo we'll all go crazy like there's oh, no yeah that's not, that's a, not retreat. a retreat that's yeah. a money hole <laughs> i know <laughs> maybe they're on a mission okay they're happy to schedule every day <laughs> i know yeah we would be too frantic in tokyo so that's not a good place for a retreat but like portland so, oh man i i kind of want to it to be there next time so people from yeah. the bay area could come up like people from the north can go down like we see people drive down from vancouver to the other vancouver all the time yeah. i mean oh yeah so. totally <laughs> so yeah i would be too far see when april was talking about this i i was thinking about cute cabin slash cottage in the woods yeah. and and when you said okay when you're talking about food i was like we could just make muffins. <laughs> we can make muffins in the woods. And, like, I love like, that. That sounds amazing. I don't, I don't know why that came to me. <laughs> because I think with journaling, there's that DIY component. I can see like Nita probably has like some yeah. awesome cast iron thing. She can like yes. make sourdough bread on the on the Exactly. Fire. Nita can make the sourdough. I can make like banana bread. We could even get like one of those like um what are those taco like a takoyaki thing oh, yeah. <laughs> <Make> takoyaki. Oh, <laughs> that would be so <laughs> cute <laughs> <laughs> and um i think for a, a retreat it would be really cool obviously i will i'll be the one to say this to bring like a bunch of empty ink vials and empty pens and then everybody can bring their ink collection and we can all just like take and share and <laughs> Yes. yes. Ink just swap. Be in a bathtub with ink. <laughs> I mean, not literally, but well, you it'd know. be so nice if the place has a hot tub, and then at night we can gaze up into the constellations while in the hot tub. Right. Oh. Right. <laughs> with your like midnight colored ink. <laughs> it's just. Yeah. I was like, I'm not gonna bring too much this time because last time I brought like two to three back because I have like a. <laughs> an urban sketching setup. I have the stationary setup. And I remember Nita from a blank note brought an entire suitcase of her stamps because she couldn't oh decide. God. And so I was thinking if I were to plan this time for a retreat that's like two days, I would probably just fill 
however much my TSL engineer tote bag can hold, which is the mm-hmm. one that's still pretty sizable. But that's it. Like, seriously, I cannot, I, I should not bring more than that. And I might focus more on like the watercolor because usually on retreat, I think of myself as like creating art in like a very reclusive place of watercolor, maybe washi tape samples, like the, you know, the portable mm-hmm. cards, no full rolls. We're not doing rolling samples for the retreat. That's for cafe journaling. This is like, really like that. use oh, okay. your stuff. <laughs> and then maybe like a few stamps, a handful of stamps, you know, the ink pads, and then like a bunch of stickers because it's about like the the process of creating i think in these i like that because part of the issue we ran into last time was when you do bring a lot of stuff you run out of table space oh my god yeah (laughs) together in a cabin you know the table is not that big and all of us we were piling things on the ground next to us we were using the suitcase rack as a place to put extra supplies we moved but, the couch so we, it could hold the excess stationery. <laughs> but it is. It sounds it, so good, though. <laughs> I do remember a lot of people, um, like, learn, playing with other people's supplies, though. And so I remember people, like me, trying out other people's ink pads or, like, trying somebody else's tape and be like, oh, I've never tried this before. And so in that, there is that overlap with the cafe journaling also, mm-hmm. like, what the same um, interaction happen at the retreat but yes space is a commodity and I think I mean for aesthetics I feel like I also want to bring a um, something by the superior labor oh yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> I would bring it to my backpack um the pen but, roll oh, of course oh the yeah pen the, pen roll. Yes, the pen roll a good oh, couch and then like would I bring my switch like that's another question do we play the switch at our retreat it could be like maybe that could be like the the nighttime thing Down like after night. we spent all day journaling we can break out animal crossing <laughs> but okay wait oh, speaking of switch just really quick i really want to get everybody into the new pokemon snap when it comes out and i hope all the, our animal crossing crew can hop on that because it's going to be super cute and stupid and fun <laughs> the, the photography aspect of us capturing the perfect yes. shot yes <laughs> and printing them and putting in our hobo oh my god is someone someone will have to bring a portable printer that's like, true mm-hmm. yes that's true someone has to bring a portable i think did we have several printer, a cam uh last time but Anyway, there's like this, the selfie I think is a little big, but the quality is really good. Like just but, one person bring it. Like yeah. we, we'll, we'll have to assign oh. each other right. to like, this person brings all the ink pads, this person oh, brings yeah. the printer and then like all like that, that. Other stuff. We need, we need a little <laughs> bit of a allocation there. <laughs> I hope we do actually do this because like I'm, I'm into the idea. And so programming, oh. this yes, is the part I'm do? super excited about. We have to have a, you know, kind of like the traveling traveler's notebook. We need to have a session where everyone writes in each other's planner. Yeah, like round robin. Yeah. Exactly, a round robin thing. So maybe for like an hour, we just like, you know, exchange yeah. books and like do a little like, you know, graduation, write down <laughs> notes for each other thing. And do, and do we have like a timer like like in school Ding. when you would, and then, you would like, go to those different like Pass it stations. to the person on your right. Yeah, that would be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who still like didn't know what we're talking about, we're literally talking about a retreat where we journal like from morning till like the evening, <laughs> nonstop, long, long and, cafe journaling sessions. And, and baked muffins. I, yeah. <laughs> Muffins is our sustenance. <laughs> I did like having large stretches of unplanned time. That I thought was one of the most important things for me at the retreat because like a lot of us have stuff that we want to do, but we we're catching up on or we never got a chance to do. So I feel like I use that time to like catch up on a bunch of days and like stamp a bunch of things I haven't stamped yet. And then also like during the daytime, our group kind of, you know, people will break off and do like, some people do art, some people want to journal, and, and I thought that was, that would be a nice way to have, like, 
not like formal sessions, but just time where people can try different activities. Yes, too. like different. You can go do your own thing, and you guys. Some yeah. people even went hiking, and like some people just sat by the beach and draw. That's me because I don't like hiking. <laughs> like, yeah, that, I was gonna say I'd be with you, April. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe someone could be cooking. Oh, that would be so fun. And so I thought of another thing that would be fun. It's kind of like the secret Santa thing, but like throughout the whole camp, the retreat, you in the beginning, you'll be assigned someone. And then like at the last evening, we'll sit around the campfire and we'll open like a happy mail from your- That's so cute, ooh, stop. From your, your camp that. buddy or something. Oh, oh I that. love that. And then <laughs> you, you would put in ephemeras, like collected throughout this, the retreat in that mail or like oh i noticed you making the hot cocoa last night thank you for doing that for no. us. <laughs> i was actually gonna say there should be someone like in charge of the cocoa <laughs> <laughs> so no, awesome we had last time we did the retreat we have a drink station and there was just so many drinks to choose from like someone's making hot cocoa and Nita from a blank note brought this super amazing tea and like we we were using their co-press yeah the the press the french press thing to make tea and then oh, like sweet. someone someone That's had fun. like instant coffee and i was thinking we should have a boba bar <laughs> unlimited uh, bubble tea matcha uh, drinks <laughs> that sounds so good oh um, my gosh i think another thing we could try is like if somebody has a new item or like a technique that other people might not know maybe they could share a little bit you know like workshop sessions little. yeah like a little session like if somebody has made their own ink out of walnut shells or something you know because you can make ink maybe they can bring some walnut shell ink for people to try and do some sketching or like yeah lino you know, stamp carving session wow. i was like i actually wrote down make our own stamps like carving on in the list too yes. i think that would be super fun <laughs> yes that would be so fun because i've never successfully carved one before it'd be so fun if we all like we're all just there with our own knives carving away <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but, but what else would you guys want to eat? Like, okay, we talked about the boba bar. What else would we be eating? Ramen. <laughs> Instant ramen is kind of like my, <laughs> my go-to for like a night out, like, you know, in the cabin <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I feel I, like I, cooking, like, <laughs> so this is going to sound weird, but when I, when my dad mm -hmm. used to like take us camping and stuff, he would get like steak and like cut it up into little bits and cook the steak over the fire and it's like so good that sounds <laughs> delicious <laughs> yeah. i think i would need um if we were in the city i would definitely oh, yeah. need like foodie people to say like oh yeah where, which places we should go to you know yeah if we're in the city the options are endless yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. If we're in a like a reclusive area, like like last time where we want to like eat on the beach or something, I think takeout, like Asian food takeout would be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about like how Asian food can be a takeout and it like holds, I don't know, like eating out of the boxes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. man, that would be so good. I also like when I go camping, we do a lot of like, I think of like Northwest harvest type of tapas like you get a giant cheese board and you have like smoked salmon you have cheese you have figs and stuff and you just like munch away it's easy to eat with your hands and you can still journal at the same time like a charcuterie board yes, yes. charcuterie oh board God. that's like the quintessential cafe journaling necessity <gasps> if you're doing it at your home <laughs> the cookie's <laughs> making a little special appearance right now he's so, so cute let's hope he doesn't bark <laughs> Do we bring our pet? I don't know. I feel like maybe not. <laughs> I feel like bringing um, pets. It doesn't take a lot of attention, right? I yeah. know. It's a it's a retreat. We're like retreating from responsibilities, <laughs> right? <laughs> so. yeah. And then you get like really excited. Even if I'm just like at work for the day and I'm always really excited to see Maya at the end of the day. <laughs> it's like, it'll just make you excited to see your little people, your, right. your animals or your tiny human like Phyllis has. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and then it's funny because after the retreat you know we'll all be journaling about the retreat and everyone's <laughs> everyone's pages is gonna have the same photos the same thing 
Yes. If you're watching Twitch streams or whatever, like the week following, that's what everyone's going to be talking about. <laughs> that, like, and how many people would be there? Like, I know, right? That's like, a, that a, I guess it depends on how, if you want to have like formal sessions or you could even rent out one of those retreat areas that have multiple cabins you could have like 20 30 people but Whoa. i feel like then you gotta really make sure everyone's like chipping in to help with the food costs of the park yeah so. no i feel like that's too much I would... yeah like 10 <laughs> maybe -ish, someday 10 ish people 10 to 15 i feel like is the maximum yeah uh, like because i have the tendency to want to like organize and make sure everyone's like on top of things like itinerary yeah. planning you know that's our thing yeah. so 10 to 15 i think is a good number because you can have like different rooms, different, yeah. and, you know, those sessions that Phyllis, you talked about where people can go and do their own stuff. It's like, yeah. it's when it's a better group number for clusters, I assume, like five, <laughs> five, five, you know, instead of solo or like one or two, two people together. I for think I'm probably in like the five to 10 group because I like to be able to get to know people a little yes, bit. Yes. I think I want a little bit of a smaller group, but um yeah i think yeah. that range seems to be a good number probably not too big and not too small you know yeah. i i feel like with the trend in the last past two years with like camp and all that people like doing little trips together based on their hobby we haven't really seen any stationary ones i think there are some like crafty meetups and stuff but like the kind that we explore a bunch of like nature capturing memory keeping mm -hmm. not just like scrapbooking with like existing stuff i feel like this is more about also exploring what we're seeing at the at the natural environment or something like that we're like city city exploring mm -hmm. and cafe hopping so i i really hope this could be like a, a a frequent occurring thing and people would share their retreats with us <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Maybe there'll be a stationary cafe retreat in 2022. We'll 2022. <laughs> I know. I feel like that's a healthy goal to strive for. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. do one where everyone goes to Japan together, but that's a uh, little bit too ambitious right now. Yeah. I think everyone would have to plan that on their own and then just meet up. It'd be a giant meet up. Yeah. Yeah. And Phyllis, trying remember to plan how... that for everybody. Oh would my be God. A lot. That, that would be a lot. <laughs> We need a we need a planner. Um, someone reached out to me on Facebook and said, "Hey, are you interested in bringing your planner friends to a, a Caribbean cruise?" And I'm like, "Whoa, that that would be fun, but also a lot of work. No thanks." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, <sighs> FOMOing right now, even though this thing doesn't even like happen. But like, I, I really want to go. <laughs> well, the retreat is like on the spectrum of community building and hanging out with people. Retreat is like probably the biggest, but I guess we could focus down and we've had a lot of fun, even cafe journaling experiences. Mini, too. So mini meets. Exactly. They almost feel as rejuvenating. Well, probably not as rejuvenating as a retreat, but they're a really great like way to just hang out and de-stress at the end of a week. So yeah. I'm wondering, like, have you all had favorite or very memorable cafe journaling experiences? <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first since I feel like I've I've done a lot of cafe journaling in yeah. my in my and time. And the cafe journaling Facebook group, right? Was that you? Oh yeah, that that's me. I we so. have I actually yeah. have a Facebook group where, you know, it's kind of like capturing journals in the wild. You know, people. I don't know if it's really becoming a very popular thing now to go out to cafes and just journal. And it's me kind of mimicking, you know, the Japanese lifestyle of seeing people anywhere and then having their planners out. But cafe journaling also is like the meetup portion, right? And since I came to the U.S., I've been kind of stepping out of my shell, like I said, again, and being more open to meeting other people who shares my love for stationery. And I just want to talk about my Hobonichi with people. So I think I've done a lot in like Boston when I was first there for like two and a half years. And one of my favorite cafe journaling experiences is definitely in the city um, in Boston with my OG crew, shout out Tammy, Drew, Terry, my, my, my friends over there on the East Coast, because we, I think we're like a rare bunch who actually meet up 
quite frequently, like every other week or every three weeks. And my friend Terry would even drive down from New Hampshire to come into the city nice. <laughs> to meet up with us. And the thing is, in Boston, there's not really many cafes with like a bunch of large desks like we do here in Seattle with like the reserve, Starbucks reserve soda. So we often like kind of poke out or like stand out in those little nice niche. Like Boston's a very old town. So all of the cafes are kind of like run down and like very like rustic and homey looking. And so we finally found a place that had like big enough table. And that's actually at one of those Capital One tech cafes. You know, the one where <laughs> people go in to do their banking and things. And we're like, like it's mostly like people going to work because Boston's also a very big tech and finance hub. So a lot of like, you know, people in suits and stuff. But we're like this table spread out with our stationary stuff. That is so good. <laughs> and we were there so frequently. The the salesperson, like the people at Capital One knows us and they come by and talk to us. And they mm -hmm. even give us free like drink tickets because they're in Capital One cafes is usually with the what is that? Oh, Pete's Coffee. Um, so it's kind of like that coffee bar inside. So we get to drink, like get to get free drinks from Pete's Coffee nice. <laughs> whenever we meet up. It was hilarious. And we, we stood out so much. And we were like saying how we're so shameless in like just <laughs> taking the whole table. But then again, I don't feel too guilty because we only meet up like once every three weeks. It's just like one Sunday you know, a month or something. <laughs> yeah. It was really nice. <laughs> That's so cool. I like, I love the idea of becoming cafe regulars. Like you guys became cafe regulars, you know, where you got like perks and they knew you and yeah. wow, that's so cool. I hope one day when the pandemic is over, we can be cafe regulars. We can meet up. Oh at We're kind of cafe regulars at the Seattle Starbucks Reserve Soda, which is right below their headquarters. Like, That's since true. the pandemic began, um, I think the last two times we went, the, the people actually asked, so what have you guys been doing throughout the pandemic now that you can't meet up? <laughs> Just crying, crying Just alone. Just crying at home. home. <laughs> Getting tear stains on our journals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so okay so I think one of my my most favorite cafe journaling experience because I've I've had quite a few too probably not as many as April but um I I'm thinking about this one time mom and I went to Tokyo together and you know we're we're super jet lagged we just got back from uh I think we were at Loft, and then we also went to, um, we went to Ochanomi Zoo, which is where um, Boom Poto is, which is that shop I've talked to April's ear off about, that also has the really good katsu place right next to it, but anyway, um, so my mom and I had just bought, like, a bunch of stationery, and we, it was, even though it was October at the time, it was still pretty hot and humid, yes. not as bad as August or July, but in Japan, but it was still pretty bad. So we're like, oh, we really need to just sit down and like take a breather. Like we've been shopping. So um, we went into the, it was like a bookstore and a cafe all in one. And um, we ordered iced coffee floats. I remember that, which is just iced coffee with like the soft serve ice cream on top. Um, and I remember we laughed so much, really loud <laughs> together because we were looking through this journal that we had bought for my friend Gabby. We, or it was a planner actually. And uh, it just had all this really funny, like these English expressions and, and my mom and I were so tired and we thought it was the funniest thing. And we're just sitting there <laughs> cracking up like, <laughs> two tourists in a Japanese yeah. local cafe just like completely being Losing themselves <laughs> and I'm like they probably hate us but we're having so much fun <laughs> I love it didn't you and your mom like get interviewed at a Japanese tv show stepping off the airplane yes that's happened to me a couple times and they're <laughs> like what what pen are you using and your mom has like the zebra clip pen like <laughs> in her yeah, pocket she, she was working so, so she had her uniform on and and 
we were talking about Sarasa clips and she's like, oh, you mean like this one right here? And they're like, oh, mom. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, oh, they always get me right when you get off the, like out of the plane. And it's like, oh man. <laughs> like a celebrity. I know. <laughs> right after you, as soon as you land. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's, I, I love cafe journaling in Japan. It's just, it's so much fun. Oh, <laughs> so good. What about Phyllis? Well, okay. I couldn't really decide between two, but so the first one is uh, in can my cafe journaling experience in New York. There's a, um, a Korean bakery cafe called, I don't know how to say it. It's like French, I think. It's like Tu Le Jour or something. Tu Le Jour. <laughs> But anyway, it's in Koreatown. And that was the first place that I ever had like a real stationary meetup with people who are interested in Hobonichi and Traveler's Notebook. That's where I met April and Aww. some of her other friends, Cindy and Whitney. And um, uh, it was just so much fun to journal there. I remember like going down, meeting them and then coming home and being like, wow, they're like, I can meet people through this journaling habit. There's like other people who care about this thing. That I'm you messaged me and you were like, oh, my train was late. Like you actually took the train. Oh, did I tell Into you? the city. <laughs> yeah, I took the train from Albany because that's where I was um, in school. And so I took the train down like oh. three hours-ish to a little bit over two hours. Dang. Yeah. Um, and then my, so that was just really memorable because that was the first time I like connected with the community. And that place has like bubble tea and like bakery goods. It's just the perfect, perfect cafe journaling yeah. session. <laughs> classic. So classic. Um, and then the second one I was thinking of is also like, it was my experience with, um, cafe journaling in Taiwan, which I was like, this is the real deal here. <laughs> So um, after we got married, uh, Andrew and I got married in 2016, we went to Taiwan right afterwards to go see my family and have like another celebration there. And so um, it happened to be that time was when Traveler's Notebook had their caravan through yeah. Taipei. So it right. And really so I had like the timing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then like I wrote all about it and then I also went to a cafe called it's called Shula Oh my god, Freelance. such a pretty cafe. It's it's be wait, you've been there, April? I've been there, yeah, I've been there. Oh. It's it's one of the iconic places to 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 visit, you know. I mean not iconic, but it's just like it's one of those places where people hang out at cafes yes. for the aesthetics and the interior design and everything. It's like all wood inside, but very also artistic and eclectic like there's like weird window panes and like artwork hanging down from the ceiling and then they also have a special little stand where they sell um stationery and stuff from like local artists like stickers and so journaling there was like super fun and i had like you know my pages from that time in 2016 are like so kind of different than my style now but like it's just mm -hmm. there's like stamps to collect and um it was just like a really, really fun time to journal there. I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm so jelly. I, I so badly want to go to Taiwan with both of you guys. That, that would be so much fun. <laughs> Taipei has like a bunch of cafes and they all like are designed so people could like hang out and relax like over the weekend. It's, it's really quite an activity to go to a cafe and like to to do things or hang out with your friends take photos and all that yeah. and so i remember when i was when i just started my stationery like re reignited my hobonichi adventure around my house there's like five different cafes i could just go to and you know people usually go study there but i go and like journal there and then there's like they're all very interesting and the interiors are all so fun to sketch so i think that's also why like in taiwan like urban sketching and like cafe urban sketching is very very popular <laughs> too <laughs> so many cool and interesting interiors to draw <laughs> one thing i didn't realize yeah is like how much people really do like sit and stay like we feel like it's unique to like our stationary you know world or maybe like people who study I guess would probably mm -hmm. also sit and stay in cafe but um yeah at a lot of the cafes especially like the ones with more interest or appeal 
there's a minimum. You have to pay like a certain, like you're, there's an order minimum in order to stay in yeah. the capital too, yeah. so that you don't just have people who are like, oh, can I get a glass of water? And then they just sit there for four yeah. hours. <laughs> you mean you mean here or in Taiwan? In Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. In Taipei. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> Oh, oh, when you guys come, I have to take you guys to this place called Toast Chat, and there's like a bunch of cats inside, and like it's just really chill. It's got great toast dessert. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> My favorite journey. If you're in Taipei and find a cool cafe, like Andrew and I were just walking around, we were hungry, and we were like, had just crossed this gigantic park, like, and we were like, we don't want to walk back, and then we look to our right, and then there's this whole. It's like a a German inspired cafe and everything inside was German with like pretzels and stuff. Awesome. So cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You've been there April, you're like it's it's like by Full Fuchin Yang Quan, I think. I know exactly which one you're talking about. So <laughs> see oh I've been to so many. <laughs> oh man. Oh. oh my gosh. The FOMO is real. The FOMO is real. And now I want to talk about a little bit on a different topic, you know, kind of going back to our stationary addiction and, you know, fitting the happy hour theme. Let's each share one thing that's kind of in our shopping cart or almost at checkout <laughs> or things that we kind of want. I know it's very close to um, Kelly's birthday soon and like Phyllis. So, you know, I'm sure you guys have some wish list and, me, I should I really shouldn't be shopping anymore since like it's the end of April, but there's still some things I want. And you know what? I'm like saying this in the future because I might have already gotten it by the time this episode comes out. So. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not the end of April, but when this comes out, I guess it will be. <laughs> Yeah. Can I can I start? I'll, yeah, I'll start. You go. Oh my gosh. So I have two things. I made one thing, but I'm like I have two things I really want. And one is this J. Urban Vert Atlantide Shimmery Green Ink. Oh, so <laughs> Your pretty. hands are shaking. It's so, so pretty. I know for sure we've talked about this before, and I remember like I had shown April my swatch of it and she was like oh okay I think I can go without it and then just last night she's like so how about that ink though and I was like April <laughs> well you showed it to me through the screen and I'm like I'm not impressed I don't see the shimmer but I got the sample from my friend Toasty Treat Ariel and she oh, gave yeah. a little tiny sample and I used my glass pen and I, I like tilted my head a little bit and the shimmer just like like went into my eyes and I was like oh my goodness this is pretty it's very good so I really want that but then again I feel like this is probably not a fair thing that I want to buy in the horizon because I probably would have already purchased it <laughs> I'm not saying anything but like that may have may or may not have happened but the other thing though oh my goodness um Furukawa Shiko our favorite Japanese washi paper maker who has just been releasing a bunch of melon soda items, but they kind of collaborated with a local glass pen maker, a Hase place, mm. and came up with the beautifulest, is that even a word, the prettiest melon soda glass pen. Stop. And I have zero idea how to get my hands on it. I don't know where I can buy it. I don't even know how they could ship it to me. But if anyone can make it happen, see why? <laughs> Please let me know. I'll pay anything <laughs> to have I that. I feel glass like CY has our back. <laughs> it's so pretty. And I feel like I've seen it already before, but like they're re releasing it again. And I'm just like, I need it. <laughs> you I need, need it. it. I really need it. It's so pretty. Like if I can have one single glass pen in my life, this would probably be the one. That's some that's some big words, April. I know. I'm like, whoa. Famous last <laughs> words again. <laughs> oh, so that's me. That's something I really, really want. Oh. oh man. How about what about you? you, Kelly? Kelly. Oh man. Well, I mean, you all know I I just threw down some money to get that pen from CY. So we don't need to talk about that for a third time. <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, you know, I really have been looking at the, the cat lady stamps from, uh, 
from Everyday Explorers Co. Mm -hmm. that aren't out yet. They'll be out on the 13th of April, but I'm like, because my mom was asking what I wanted. I'm like, so maybe that. (laughs) (laughs) But also, I just looked at cute things from Japan, and they just released a ton of BGM washi tapes, and can BGM just stop already? Like, (laughs) they have this, like, twinkle teacup washi tape. Oh my god, it's just, I just can't handle all of the new stuff. is always making cute things, every, all the time. (laughs) Like with the foil and the colors, like, oh, and they're coming out with all the summer stuff because Japan is always... Yeah, they're they're uh, one step ahead of the curve with all yeah. The when trends. it comes to seasons, it's always like like when cherry blossom stuff came out, it was still winter because <laughs> they, they we need to prepare, right? We need to prepare our journals to be able to handle. So I don't know, just all that crazy, adorable, <laughs> blah blah. <laughs> Lovely, but I don't yeah. have any like major things on the horizon as of this moment. <laughs> maybe if like Bon Cushion came out with like new releases because she's been she's been sneak peeking it I think in her Instagram post but then again by the time this episode came out it probably would have already been there and you've already bought it so <laughs> <laughs> but also I mean I could get a rose latte cover to match my bag <laughs> Ooh, that would be nice. really cute <laughs> that would be pretty <laughs> But what about Phyllis? She's been kind of mulling over a few things. Oh my gosh. I don't know what got into me the other night, but I was just feeling like very susceptible to being enabled. (laughs) We all do. There's all this talk about glass pens and April shared something that Patrick had, Patrick Ng had shared. (gasps) And then that was a, it was a um, company called Zen Handmade makes these glass dip pens that are also encased in like a um, like a fountain pen barrel. And so they're like very hard to get. They're handmade. They're like hand turned by their metal worker and stuff. And it's like two people who make this or something. And it turns out Yoseka Stationery in the U.S. has a special collaboration with them where Sen Handmade created special versions just for Yoseka. And I saw there was one remaining and I like had this panic and I was like, I suddenly like, I need to have this pen. <laughs> it is more money than I've ever spent on a pen on any station. That's true. It's a little pricey. <laughs> um, and so I like kind of had this panic moment and I was like panic messaging our group and like trying to decide. And then um, I talked to one of my friends and she's very practical. And she was like, Phyllis, how long have you wanted this pen? And I said, 30 minutes. <laughs> you need to think about it longer. <laughs> you need to sleep on it. <laughs> but you did sleep on it. So what do you think now? Well, so now, well, so I, in an um, um, unprecedented move, I stayed up really late last night. I couldn't fall asleep. And then I happened to see um, Wanderlust release their oh, man. new, although again, now it's probably like two weeks by the time the episode releases, but they released their new um, Urban Sketcher pouch. So it's like a zippered pouch with pockets on both sides, on the inside, space for pens, space for your um, sketching materials, like your watercolor palette. Palettes are usually thick, right? So that really allows for that space. Exactly. It's very, there's a lot of height to it. So it's um, like a big rectangular brick kind of, Um, but it comes in four different like natural leather kind of colors like natural leather brown light brown and black and then they have two special release colors right now with this slightly like textured leather in a mint green and then a like light pastel pink and they're so pretty but you know again that I've only been thinking about this for like the last 12 hours (laughs) (laughs) so I don't know but Hold on to your wallet. I know. Here's so I feel like Phyllis, I like if you want me to enable you, I I personally would go for like a pen over a pouch. Because I feel like you've got lots of pouches, but do you have lots of pens? Maybe, but that's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Just left it at there. (laughs) You know, I think if I'm going to spend a large amount of money. I think a pen seems like it would make more sense because I think a pen's craftsmanship, I, well, 
it's hard to say because of wanderlust you know the superior labor their craftsmanship is excellent also so yeah, that's it's, true. it's hard to decide i think it just in the end depends on um what i really need or want and to be honest i probably just like the idea of thinking about all of these things and in the end i won't buy anything <laughs> And I love how you said, like, <laughs> should I should I put it into Teddy's college fund? And I like my immediate yeah. response was, why can't he take out a loan? Like, why are you <laughs> paying for his college funds? <laughs> uh, maybe in the future, education would have been so prevalent that, you know, you don't have to pay for college tuition and then you'd be saving for nothing and your youth, right? The, the youth of your your youth and your life you know, would have been wasted saving up for something that you don't even need to save up for. So April is terrible, by the way, just putting that on the record. <laughs> I'm like, April, I don't think that's how college is going to work in the US. <laughs> I'm laughing I love so it. Hard. I'm here for that. April is just, she's like, has these, you know, socialist tendencies. She wants education to be free for everyone. <laughs> Well, you next free healthcare? Come on. Or he can go to a school in Taiwan. It's not that expensive. That's true. Authentic there. Teddy, mommy oh, spent your college fund on stationery ten years ago, so now you have you got to go overseas. <laughs> yes, yes, you got to go overseas. Perfect. Maybe he'll even get sponsor uh sponsor scholarships. So you know, maybe that wouldn't even be an issue. So yeah, yeah, be optimistic. You know. <laughs> A healthy mommy raises a healthy and smart kid. <laughs> and healthy mommy means mental health and wellness with stationery. Yes. yes. <laughs> Completely. We have a lot of people that would agree with that. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> And then finally, to kind of wrap up the episode, I want us to share like one creator and like that we've never mentioned before on the podcast, I think. And then like, hopefully we hadn't mentioned them before. I want it to be a new creator, new artist, new people we're following on Instagram. And then maybe shout out one shop that you would like to recommend. Um, Kelly, why don't you start? Yeah, so um, I literally just messaged this guy. His name is uh, Mike and... Ant Koyak, I'm probably saying that wrong and I'm sorry. Um, we can link him in the show notes or whatever. Um, I think maybe CY had shared one of his posts in his story and then I was like, that looks cool. So he, the way that he does ink swatching and like ink exploration is just very unique and interesting. He does this, he just posted this. Um, sister cistercian cistercian numerals mm. uh they really look like runes to me which is why i was drawn to them <laughs> um, he'll like put like a big version of one of those numerals in the corner and then kind of do this really intricate border and write what ink he's doing and then like writing this big excerpt and doing ink blot I'm explaining it very badly. <laughs> no, if you go onto his Instagram, which is Mike Dodd and Kowiak, I'm going to mm -hmm. also butcher that as well. It's, it's amazing. And like the unity of him going, um, I think on like a gradient of color scheme yeah. too, is pretty amazing. I, I really, really adore it. The ink yeah. swatches on that complete, I, I'm calling it an artwork. Like he would create the spread and then like totally. splotch the ink on top of it. It's, it's so beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's hashtag goals for sure. So I, I actually just messaged him this morning because he posted a, a photo of the black cat sailor pen with his black cat. I think and I, I saw and that then, too. <laughs> yeah, and I responded and I was like, if they ever make a tabby cat pen, I am dying. And he's like, yeah, because he has a Persian cat or maybe a Siamese. He's, so he's got two sailor cat pens that met, match his cats, but then he has a tabby. So uh, one more. <laughs> one more. Yeah. Nice. And the shop? Oh, the shop. So another, this one I just found out also earlier, like yesterday or today, um, Wren's got a package from them. They're based in Malaysia. 
and their Instagram is Sheen Jodu or Shin Jodu. Um, and we can link that as well. It's it's very like old school scrapbooky, um, vintage. What would you say? There's some wax seals going on. There's mm-hmm. some like old looking stuff. <laughs> old looking stuff. That's what vintage means. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just an interesting um an interesting new shop that I'm gonna explore and hopefully not blow all of the money on. <laughs> you know, that's the thing with like there's just so many people out there curating and like selling awesome items for us, like from around different countries, like you know, creating the artists that we don't necessarily have immediate access to. And I, that's why I really like shops in like Asia that kind of helps do that and it's like easier for them because one of my shop that I was going to talk about is also based in Malaysia but then her mm-hmm. stuff I'll go actually I'll actually go next and I'll talk about the shop first it's called journal pages and the shop is in Malaysia but they have artists from Taiwan from Japan mm-hmm. like from a bunch of obviously local artists and you know creators and this shop kind of similar to yours but more of a modern aesthetics mm-hmm. that I think is what the Asian journaling community really likes and you go to their new arrival and then I thought it was such a great way for me to learn about new artists popping up um, yeah. the new release section like for example I never knew about this brand in Taiwan called Stationary Instinct and it's a washi row with these like Polaroid looking like scenes and like photos and it's so good Mm. and they also have black milk project which is another popular ink ink stamps i just figured i just discovered them too they're amazing (laughs) and scroll a little Um, bit further down this other taiwanese artist meow stale has these like leaf vein white ink pet tape that creates beautiful like you know when the leaves had all decayed Mm -hmm. and you just get like the vein itself it's so pretty and i'm just like wow so many cool stuff in this website and it ships from malaysia so expect some international shipping if you're not in malaysia but I'm, th- I'm talking more about like the people in Asia who wants to look for options to, you know, yeah. explore different artists because they, she, this shop, I don't know if it's a she or her, him, also has like a bunch of stuff from Japan too, like the, the kite, the little uh, kotomo no kite, like the small, small stamps that sits around a regular postage stamp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So oh, it's, yeah, it's got the uh-huh. special series and then, um, Oh, they even have Taiwanese modaiji um, stamps. So that's that's a really good one. I, I just love looking through <laughs> the collection. I don't think I'm making a purchase anytime soon, but it's just really, really, really but nice this, to look at. This episode goes out later, so that's probably a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Calling me out. <laughs> and then for, as for the creator, I wanted to shout out. Um, it's actually, Phil, is you sharing your cafe journaling meetup experience that reminded me of my friend, our friend, Grace, who her, whose Instagram is Wednesday Company, and she's based in Bronx, and she does these really cool illustrated, like, um, you know, kind of like the girl sticker, but more of a variety, like, very skin tone color, and, like, it really has that, like, kind of New York hipster vibe but also like have vintage half hip um characters and i love looking through her spreads as well she uses a hobonichi and you know a sort of journals and her 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 art is amazing and when i first met her which is around that time we did new york meetups um you know whitney christina she's Whitney's friend and she came by she was making badges and pins and today she's like running a little Etsy store the Wednesday company so definitely check out her art I really like it a lot wow I'm like following all of these people as you're mentioning it but it's (laughs) yeah her page looks very aesthetic it has that kind of like dewy morning like sunshine glow yeah it's a sapia glow yeah, sapia, exactly to, to mm-hmm. all of her her spreads it's really Love amazing it. um well the two that i wanted to share i'm um doing spotlight on taiwanese artists um and so one the creator is fafa underscore handbook 
her pages, I think, are like, when I think of the Taiwanese collage style, that's like the quintessential style. And then she has some cool, like, you know, how she does tags or how she does some other, like, DIYs and stuff. Mm, um, so I tags. really like her account. Yeah, like little, like, um, like using the classic -y tags or something. Um, and then the shop is, that I want to share, is on Pinkoi. It's called Some Sort of Fern. It's some sort of dot fern. I don't know if we've talked about them before. I've actually not purchased anything from them before, but they have very beautiful designs. I feel like it's um, a little bit like Mr. Eggplants, but a little bit more colorful, like mm -hmm. almost on the side of like being a little like avocado mori, I guess, where we see some gentle colors. I bought a little sample uh, of her or his swashi tape from Tokubet's memory the other day. Oh, the, what? <laughs> yeah, the one where it's like the little, the variety of fashionable little people icon. Oh, wow. It's so good. I like it a what lot. What about the cat paw swashi? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see it. It's I so know, cute. The, the first thing of um, by this shop that I saw was this one. It's a PET tape that has um, all these different plants on it, but the gr it's like green and white and black. That's the theme. And I just, it was so vibrant. And I loved that color combo. Like they weren't doing a bunch of colors. It was just this, the green was so vibrant. I was like, oh, it's so cool. But I didn't end up getting it. But very neat shop. And they're on Pinkoy. Oh, cat paws. Lots, lots of good stuff here. <laughs> I'm mad at you guys. <laughs> that cat one. There's a, there's a, did you see through the images? There's one that looks like Maya, like the tabby Maya. <laughs> yes, they're so cute. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I think that's that's a great wrap to this hundredth episode. We talk about our dream stationary retreat. We talk about stationary we love, and we talk about the community and the whole cafe journaling experience. And I hope we really had broken a lot of myths um, of people thinking about like journaling as a very like indoor, alone by yourself activity. And I, it's it's evident in the past years <laughs> that it's definitely growing to be. A legitimate hobby that we're proud to tell people because I, I can still remember five years ago when people like asked me what do you like to do I'm like uh, play with stickers and like <laughs> journal and like like what do you like I, I like washi tape and people were like what is washi tape but I think I think people know us now and then we're, we're in good company and we I'm Definitely. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Good I actually did just have that conversation with someone. They're like, wow, almost 300. That's a lot. I'm like, not compared to April. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the clear. And I'll say not compared to Caitlin, my friend who has like 700. -ish. <laughs> nice. Hey, you know, it makes us happy and it doesn't hurt anybody. It definitely <laughs> doesn't hurt anybody. And, you know, I feel like Instagram is largely made out of people like us who like, you know, create art every day. And like, you know, even if it's just a little daily life, little collage and montage, it's, it's, it's what we do and makes other people happy. And it's a healthy thing for our, our mental, you know, situation. Yes. <laughs> I, sound, I sounded weird, our mental health. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all for tuning in into the Stationery Cafe podcast for all this time. We're at the 100th episode and we really hope to bring you a lot more. And if there's anything that we would like to invite you to celebrate with us and it's just to, you know, if you have time, leave a review for us. What episode you like the most and, you know, what, what really entice you to listen to it all this time. And you can always follow us on Instagram at The Stationery Cafe. We have a website, thestationerycafe.com. And we look forward to bringing you more fun episodes in the future. Bye, Kelly. Bye, Phyllis. Bye. Bye.